Good evening and welcome to this uh, YouTube channel. Uh, my name is Pastor Becky Fetters. I'm the pastor of Christ the Victor Lutheran Church in New Berlin, Wisconsin. And I am here to share with you tonight a reflection on uh, our Monday Thursday text. And so I welcome you who are um, from Christ the Victor and those of you who are joining us from Reformation and also anybody else who is out there who has found us. I uh, hope that this word brings some comfort to your heart and some joy and some hope in this Holy Week. Um, my sermon tonight is on um, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14, uh, verses 22 through 42. This is uh, the Holy Gospel according to Mark. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread and after blessing it, he broke it gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he gave it to them and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. There is a quote that often makes it its way around the internet from the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I couldn't tell you which book or which movie anymore. Um, it is... A snippet of a conversation between Frodo and Gandalf who are talking about the evil that is overtaking their world and the need for someone to return the one ring to Mordor so it can be destroyed in the place where it began. <clears throat> and Frodo says to Gandalf, I wish it need not have happened in my time. So do I, said Gandalf in response. And so do all who live in such times. But that is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given us. Frodo in this conversation knows the weight of the task that is set before him as he is about to set out to be the one who will carry the one ring back to Mordor. And we see in the gospel for this day some similarities with Jesus, who too knows the weight of the path that lies ahead of him. 
he knows the risk. He knows how very vulnerable he is. He knows the very real danger of what he is facing. He knows already about the betrayal that is coming, the desertion of all of his friends, the denial of Peter. He knows about the accusations that will be made and how he will be condemned and that he will die on a cross. It's no great wonder then as he prays in the garden of Gethsemane that Jesus is agitated, that he is distressed, that he is deeply grieved, even to death, he says. We see here in this passage a very human side of Jesus, who perhaps wishes that it did not have to be so. He prays for this hour to pass and he says, Abba, Father, for you nothing is impossible. If it is possible, let this cup pass for me. Yet not what I want, what, but what you want, he says. Some part of him perhaps wishes that this need not have happened in his time and to him. In the time that we find ourselves living in in this world, we may feel somewhat like Frodo and like Jesus in this time that is unlike any other time that we have known. Pandemics are not new in world history, but they are new to most of us living, if not all of us. The fact that you are watching me on a video or reading these words in a document is a witness to just how much things have changed in the past few weeks. Ordinarily, we would be, we would be gathered for these holiest of days. We would be together in person to share communion and to hear this story, to be together in the anguish of Good Friday and the silence of Holy Saturday and the joy of Easter Sunday, and instead we are sequestered at home. Some of us are working at home and trying to balance life and parenting and work and all of those types of things. Some of you are on the front lines as essential workers in many different kinds of occupations. Some of you are out of work and wondering now how in the world you will pay the bills and get by until we return to the other side of this and some kind of life that will resemble the normal we once knew. And on top of that, we have loved ones, perhaps, who we know who have this virus or we are just living in anxiety um, if not for ourselves, then for the people we love who are vulnerable and at risk if they were to catch the coronavirus. And that's on top of all of the other ordinary stresses of life that come and all the other concerns that we have. And so in this time, we are grieving the changes and the losses that we have all around us and all of the things that have upended our lives and make us really, really aware of how completely not in control of any of life we really are. And even as I think most of us know and hope and pray that we will come through to the other side of this and we will be just fine, in the end there is a part of us that wishes that this need not have been in our time. Tolkien's quote reminds us that we don't get to choose the kind of time that we live in, but that we can decide what it is we do with the type of time that we are given, with the situations that we find ourselves in. We see in Jesus this tremendous example. He prays in his anguish, in his grief, in his fear, in his anxiety, for this cup to pass from him, and yet, in the end, he decides to take that cup. I think it is no accident that on many, le on many levels, I think, that this event of his betrayal and his going to the cross happens at the time of Passover, which is a festival that celebrates and remembers the story of how God led God's people, God liberated them and led them out of slavery into freedom, led them through the wilderness to the promised land. There's that story for Jesus to hold on to. And, and there is this 
one line here in this passage that I never noticed really before or paid any attention to. It says, after they finished the meal, uh, then they sang the hymn and they went to the Mount of Olives. And what I learned this week, actually, that I didn't know before is that the song that they would have sung was part of the tradition of the Passover meal, uh, that they would have ended the meal by singing Psalm 118, which in my Bible has the little subheading in quotes of a song of victory. It begins and ends with the same verse, which says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. These are the words that would have been echoing in Jesus' mind, that he would have had ringing in his ears as he went out to meet his fate. These, the psalm that speaks of distress and struggle, and yet this tremendous confidence for the one who comes, who becomes his strength and his might, and is his salvation, and whose steadfast love endures forever. And that is the song that Jesus carries with him to the Mount of Olives, to the Garden of Gethsemane, to the place where he will be betrayed and arrested. What a testimony of love and trust and faith we have that even though Jesus knew what was to come, he trusted in the God who loved him, and so he chose to accept the cup that was given to him for the sake of all of us. And so it is okay if you come on this night or this day or whenever it is that you are watching this video. Um, if you come with feelings of distress or agitation, if you are grieved by the changes and loss that we have all experienced, if we wish that this time need not have come to us, especially because we cannot know the outcome at the end. All of that is okay. You're in good company. But we know that whatever it is we are headed into, Jesus goes ahead of us into it. Tomorrow we will go with him to the cross and we will witness his death there. But even in that moment of death, there still springs this hope that comes from the psalm, the truth that God's love does endure forever for Jesus and for us. And so even in these very trying times that we may wish need not have come to us, we decide to follow the one who leads the way through death on a cross, through the silence of the tomb, to the empty tomb on Easter morning, to resurrection and new life on the other side of all that lies before us. We know that he will lead us there with him. And for that, we say thanks be to God. Amen.